Hi folks. In logic, we talk a lot about syntax and semantics. So it's essential that you understand this three-way or tripartite distinction between syntax, semantics, and pragmatics. We're not going to talk about pragmatics a lot in this course, but it's really important that you understand what it is so you see how it's different than syntax and semantics. Let's start with the simplest, syntax. Just think of syntax as the grammar of a language. And this applies to both the syntax of a natural language like English, as well as a formal language like bool or prop or FOL. So when we talk about what symbols count as part of the alphabet of the language and how to construct those symbols um, in ways that you make grammatically well-formed sentences, like capital letter P is an atomic sentence and P uh, and Q or R if the string of symbols is written in this way, then we have a grammatically well-formed complex sentence. I can tell you that these things count as sentences without telling you what P even means, or what telling you, telling you what P, Q, and R, or even telling you that this means and. So the grammar, what counts as a well-formed string of symbols, is not something about the meaning of the, of the symbols. It's just about the rules for using them. It's about the form or structure you're allowed to put them in. Um, Another thing that's going to have to do with syntax, which we'll talk about later on, is formal proofs. But we haven't gotten to that yet. So I'll just give you the mental space in your head to remember that formal proofs are going to be a, a syntactic object. Now, how is semantics different than syntax here? Semantics has to do not with the form, but with the meaning of the things. So when I tell you that P means P is guilty, or Q stands for the sentence, Quinn is guilty, um, I'm going to use this double equal sign to be like an assignment operation where I tell you, uh, if I say P double equals P is guilty, that just means I'm going to assign the meaning P is guilty to the atomic sentence letter P. So syntax is the grammar and semantics is the meaning. That's the basic um, concept that you have to understand. Now, in order for something to be true or false, like in order for P, that atomic sentence to be true, it has to mean something like P is guilty. And then the world has to be a certain way, like P is actually guilty in the world. So meaning and truth go together. You can't have truth without meaning. And that's why truth is a semantic concept. Um, when I, so interpreting these things is giving them meanings. Interpretations are semantic concepts. When we do informal proofs in English, that's also a semantic idea. So in order to give an informal proof, your audience, has to understand the meanings of the words you're saying. They have to, you know, they have to know that and means and in order to prove like, uh, if I tell you Pia and Quinn went to the movies, and so it follows that Pia went to the movies, you have to know what and means in order for that inference to be valid. So informal proofs, when we're doing that in a language like English, we can only do it if we understand the meanings of those words. So that's why informal proofs are semantic objects too. So we're gonna talk a lot about syntax and semantics in this class. Um, pragmatics is different. Pragmatics has to do with the fact that you can use words for many different purposes. You can use words to ask questions, give commands, make statements, make arguments. So there's a huge diversity of things you can do with words. And one of the really interesting facts is you can use words to say things that are not part of the literal or semantic meaning of the words. And this is one of the powers and beauties of language. Uh, but it's something that we're not going to play, uh, have a big focus on in, in a formal logic class like this. You can use logic to actually study pragmatics. This is what folks do in uh, linguistics or philosophy of language courses. But this, that's just sort of a further application of this material that's outside the bounds of this course. Um, so you might be wondering, how can you actually use words to say things different than their semantic meaning? This might sound bizarre to you. So let me give you one quick example of pragmatics so you understand what it is, um, even though this is not going to be our focus. It helps us understand better syntax and semantics too. Now, let's say that, uh, that you're uh, a faculty member who's uh, been asked by a student in order to write a recommendation uh, for somebody for uh, law school or something like that, uh, or grad school, all these other things, medical school. We have to write recommendations for students all the time. So the, the directions, there's always directions to these things. And they say something like, Can, comment on the candidate's strengths and weaknesses or their fittingness for law school. And then they give you a bunch of blank space in which you're supposed to write your comments. Now imagine that, uh, imagine that you're on the board, uh, maybe you're on the law school admissions board and you're gonna read through these files and here's the extent of somebody's recommendation for, their, for a student. The candidate has very nice handwriting, period. And then the whole rest of the space is blank. Now, what is this person saying to you? Now, the literal meaning, the semantic meaning of this is just a fact about the student's handwriting. 
That's all that this carries in semantic meaning. But this says volumes. I mean, what the person is really saying is the recommender is conveying to you that this person is completely unfit for law school. That's what this is actually saying, but not because this, the semantic words of this say this. It's because when we use words in certain contexts, there's all sorts of rules and norms for, of conversational contexts. And with all this blank space here, if, you, if the person had good things to say about the candidate, they would have said them. That's what the directions tell them after all. So the fact that they omitted all of that and then said something completely random and irrelevant uh, is conveying all sorts of information, but not in a semantic, and not just in a semantic way. This is pragmatics. What this is saying in one sense is something about the handwriting. That's the semantic fact about what it's saying. But what it's saying in the pragmatic sense is this whole other thing. That is, the candidate is totally unfit for law school. Now, this is a really terrible thing. Uh, so you should never do this if somebody asks you for a recommendation. If you can't give a good recommendation, my rule of thumb is then tell them you can't write the, you don't have time to write the recommendation because uh, you should never be mean like this. But let me warn you, uh, if this sounds ridiculously impossible, this is actually something like this happened in the history of philosophy. So in the early 1900s, uh, the two most famous philosophers in the world were Gilbert Ryle in the US and Martin Heidegger in Germany are two of the most famous philosophers. So Ryle, uh, Ryle was like the famous longtime Harvard philosopher. Uh, and uh, one time, so Heidegger's most famous philosophy book is called Being in Time. And Ryle wrote a review for it in like the most famous philosophy journal. And he just, and not only do they come from different continents, Ryle and Heidegger's ways of doing philosophy are diametrically opposed. And so Ryle just rails on how terrible this book is about the second most famous philosopher in the world at the time. Uh, about how bad it is and how unintelligible the thing is completely. And then this is how he ends his review. Being in time, it's worth mentioning, is beautifully printed and the pages have generous margins. I mean, this is exactly what that person was doing talking about handwriting. Of course, nobody thinks that the print and the margins are relevant to the philosophical qu uh, quality of the work. So he's just making this completely snide remark having to do with pragmatics. So pragmatically speaking, you can see that he's saying this being in time is total garbage, uh, even though the semantic meaning is not, that's not what the beautiful printing is. Uh, okay, so that again, that's, that's a rundown of what pragmatics is, but in order to get into pragmatics, you have to have mastered all of this other material on syntax and semantics. So we're gonna be talking about syntax and semantics a ton in this class, um, because that's uh, two really key concepts for formal logic. Okay, thanks.